Oh, and then that. So I'd like to introduce this Chinese remainder theorem back again. It's back. Bazoo's identity will be back soon. They're all back. All right. Chinese remainder theorem. Number two. N and M are co-primed to each other. You knew there was a bijective map, right? But what's what is what are they wearing this time? They're wearing little star right above your head. Little star, right? Okay. The map is the same. The map is the same. You take now these are relatively prime, a collection of classes that is relatively prime to n times n, relatively prime to n, relatively prime to m. That's the definition. All right, the map is the same. To take the class, identify a class in here, identify a class in there. So I just, what is it we have to prove? Um, we need to prove that if I choose A that is in, let me write A as, a, as an integer, GCD of A times NM equals 1. All right, does everybody see why I'm, Considering this condition, GCD of A and N times M is equal to 1. Can someone explain why am I considering this condition? This condition corresponds to this guy right here. Isn't that right? The things that are in this set is a class is represented by integer and that is relatively prime to N times M, right? So bracket A is what I'm looking at in here, right? And I have to show then GCD of A is relatively prime to N and GCD of A is relatively prime to 1. That means this is the same map. You reduce, take that A, reduce mod N, reduce mod M. That was a Chinese remainder theorem map. But you have to explain this time it land in the star. Land in the star, not just in the Z mod N. So you have to show that A you chose here, relatively prime to N, relatively prime to M, right? So that's something we have to prove. Second thing we have to prove, to show this is the bijective, bijective map, I just forgot to say this, the given by, is by, is missing the sentence, and here's a bijective. Okay, because the first line proves that it, it's it's correctly defined because it's coming from the original map is injective, right? So I hope find that this is not injective condition. It only says that is well defined. You started from there. This codomain is pr properly defined. The injectivity comes from the original map being injective because it's restriction to the original map. Now what you have to prove to make it bijective is that you have to really show it's a surjective. This time we're not going to play with the cardinality. We're going to directly prove it's a surjective. From there we conclude they have the same cardinality. Right? So to show the surjective, I have to choose um, A that is relatively prime to 1, correct? And choose B that is relative prime to 1 in there. Then um, GCD of X that is relative to the prime to N and M, where X is the solution to the Chinese remainder theorem problem. It's reduced to N, reduces to A mod N, X reduces to B mod M. All right. I want you to look at, not thinking about proving it, look at the statement. What is it establishing in here? I choose a random number in here, right? That is relatively prime to n. So I'm looking at one class in here, this one. Random number b this relatively prime to m. I'm looking at this one in here, right? And then I'm trying to show that x is relatively prime to n times m, where x is a solution to this Chinese remainder theorem problem. This proves it's a surjective. I choose a random element in here. I show that that element in here is relatively prime to n times m, and land it into our target, A comma B, right? So proving this one will show that this is 
this one showed that is well defined the map is well defined this one showed that well the map is a surge active is that right yeah where's injective coming from not coming around right chinese remainder theorem map originally is injective by restricting it does not change its injectivity but think about it surge activity can be harmed so we have to show this surge activity okay before we prove this one let's think about formulation one more time does all make sense all right let's go and do it exercise number two prove the two same even though it's complicated like this it's fairly simple proof though the formulating and understanding the meaning of this thing is more important here and harder to come up with this statement one and statement two consider you know proof of one things like that well since we know it has unique factorization and things like that uh, no need to go back to Bazusa identity <laughs> you need to use the factorization I think it's simplest I realized that Pazuzu's identity is much better <laughs> argument. <laughs> so I went back. I apologize. <laughs> Rather than talking about factorization, it just makes the proof hand waving. You know, this is a lot clearer. Yeah. How do you do number two? Is position identity better or factorization better?
How'd it go? Number two. In my mind, I had to think about factorization to brought down to simpler case. Not looking at the whole factorization, I just focus on the one prime. So, number two case, I contradiction, proof by contradiction, I said this is not true. So there is a prime that divides x that divides n times m. Shouldn't be. This is what I want to conclude, right? So, yeah. You get it? Okay. Very good. Very good. That's the Pazusa identity? Yeah. 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 But where is X coming from? Yeah. That's why it's to Chinese remainder theorem description. You have to go through it. It gets longer. So I thought about this one. So suppose, how about this line? Is that okay? Suppose P divides X P divides n times m, where p is a prime. That means p divides x, p divides n times m, that directly contradicts the you know, negation of this one. Something divides this GCD, right? And I looked at it. If p divides n times m, either p divides n and p divides m. Without loss of generality, I assume that, okay, say p divides n. By looking at this statement in here, time to use this condition, it's equal to x is equal to a plus ny, right? x is congruent to a mod n. So p divides x and p divides n, therefore p divides a. So a and n has a common factor, and I wrote it here, right there. a and n has a common factor of p, uh, but we assume that started from a and n co-prime to each other. So that one's contradiction. Therefore, this never happened. There's no prime that divides x and n times m at the same time. With this, without loss of generality. To yeah. so this concludes the GCD of x and n times m is one. How's that? Is that right? That's my proof of surge activity of that reduced map. Anything that starts from here have a pre-image. Of course, there is always the pre-image, but it is relatively prime. Yes. So that has to be Chinese remainder theorem map. Yeah, yeah. But you have to additionally show it's actually relatively prime. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Question. So you believe if you put stars to the original Chinese remainder theorem map, it remains, the map remains what? To be bijective. Was originally bijective. If you put stars, it's still bijective. Direct proof. Fair enough? Can somebody explain why we consider this one? We could, we could, have, we could have explained the surge activity, right? using cardinality, but we didn't use cardinality. We directly proved the subjectivity. Now we conclude about the cardinality, right? So what's the corollary here? Cardinality of this one is a cardinality of this one times that. So what is the cardinality of the left-hand side? That's right. That's right. That's the whole point. Phi of n times m equals phi of n times phi of m. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Just look at the big picture. Answers right there. 